Welcome again to the complete free Flutter course presented by yours truly, Ovidius Mazuru, right here on YouTube. In these next couple of videos, we're going to go over layouts in Flutter. And I do want to quickly say that Flutter has a lot of widgets for layouts. If I just throw all of them at you at the same time, it's going to be completely overwhelming. Uh, so what we're going to do is introduce some of the most important important ideas and concepts in these next couple of videos. And then the rest of the widgets we'll use when we're building actual projects later on. So we're not going to get to all of them now, but we will eventually, no worries about that. And another quick note, initially, I was planning on making just one longer video about Flutter layouts, but it ended up being a bit too long. <laughs> so what I decided to do instead is split it up into the two different videos and then an exercise video at the end. So yeah, if you guys have missed your exercises, we will be having one to practice our layouts. Okay, but that said, let us jump straight in. So you can see that and this is from the second video. I'll get rid of this for now. You can see that I've started with my emulator running and in my main.dart file in a new folder, which I called, I think it's layout, but the name is irrelevant. Uh, you guys can start a new project, call it whatever you'd like. You could also use the hello world project from last time. That's also fine. And once you have that, I've deleted everything slightly differently from last time. In the main function, I've used an arrow function. The only reason I've done that is because last time I did not use an arrow function. Uh, last time, maybe you guys remember, I had this. And I just wanted to show that both of them are correct. Uh, you can either have the long form function or the arrow function. I didn't want you guys to think this was the only way, so switching it up. And then in the My App widget, which I've created, I have my Material App first. Uh, Material App, remember from last time, is something which we haven't gone into yet, but it gives us things like routing, it lets us go to different pages, uh, a lot of that stuff, theme data. So some a lot of important things, but not for these super simple programs we're making now. But I do want you guys to get into the habit of always having one of those. And then I have a scaffold. Uh, the scaffold, again, remember from last time, is something which gives us a layout for the page. And same as Material App, it's something which we haven't gone into yet. It will give us a lot of useful things in the future, like the app bar. It can give us the tabs on the bottom or even on the top and that kind of thing. Um, but we're not using it yet. But again, I want you guys to get into the habit of having Material App and Scaffold. And then we get to what we're actually doing today, which is I built this layout widget, which is defined down here, class layout extends stateless widget. And the only thing the layout widget is doing right now is returning an empty container. And the reason I have an empty container is because I can't return nothing, right? I need to return something. So yeah, there you go. And if we look here, we can see it's just an empty white page. The reason it's white is because the default background color of the scaffold is white. But one thing I'm gonna do to start things off is I'm just going to explicitly say background color dot colors dot white. So you know exactly where this is coming from. And you can see refreshing it has done nothing because nothing has changed. And one really quick note, if I was using a linter, and if you're a beginner, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But for the more advanced guys, if I was using a linter, this would give me an error right here because this is dead code. It's doing what the default is and I probably shouldn't be doing this, but it's just for illustrative purposes this time. Leaving that aside, let's go into our layout widget here. You can see we have a container. A container is our most basic of layout widgets. It's, it's like a box, a box in which we can put anything and it gives us the ability to move things around in the box as well as decorating the box and that kind of thing. So containers we will use absolutely all the time to build our layouts and have things where we want them to be. 
Now we're going to take our container and the first thing we're going to do is give it a color so we can more clearly see how much space is taking and where that space is. I'm just going to give it a color of deep purple. I'm going to save this and refresh this. And we can see the entire page has turned deep purple. So what that, that means is that if I have just a container with no children in a scaffold, it's taking the maximum amount of space that it has available. That's why the background changed everywhere. But notice what happens when I give it a child. If I give it a child of a text widget, which has nothing in it, so it won't take any space, and save it and reload this, it's gone. It's not here anymore at all. Now to really illustrate what's happening, I'm going to change this to say, hello world, save it and refresh it. If we look really carefully at the top here, we can see some purple thing and I can't make out the text it probably says hello world. What I'm going to do, and I wasn't really planning on going over this widget, but just to help us along. I'm going to control click on container, click wrap with widget and here safe area. Control shift I to format this for me. Control S to save and refresh again. Now we can see hello world with that small container right here. And really quickly, so safe area is a widget which avoids the top status bar here. And also, if you have buttons, it can avoid this area as well. So you'll often see people using safe area as one of their root widgets and everything else will be a child of that. So what I was hoping to illustrate through this is that now that we have a child, our container is taking the minimum amount of space it can. And notice what happens if I decide to give this a style of font style it's textile actually and a size of 50 and the font size of 50 and refresh this the container is automatically going to resize itself exactly as needed but it's still taking the minimum amount of space it can so then what are we going to do if we don't want it to take the minimum amount of space well I can go in my container and give it a height property. And I could just give it a really big number. By the way, don't do this. <laughs> this is just an example. And if I reload it, you can see it has taken all of the space it can. Um, but this looks ugly. <laughs> don't do this. Instead, Flutter has included a, um, a constant which we can use called double dot infinity. And double dot infinity is just going to be that, a big number, but it doesn't look like a random number. <laughs> it's more clear what your intent is when you use double dot infinity. So I can refresh that, does the same thing. Similarly, I can give it a width of double dot infinity. Refresh that, and there we go. Now it takes all the space that it can as I wanted it to do. Okay, that's great. And as you can probably infer, if I can give it a height of double dot infinity, I can probably also give it a user defined height, something that whatever I want it to be. So I could give it a height of 100. And yeah, you can see that works. And I could even give it a width of 100. And refresh this. And we can see our text hello world no longer fits inside. And because I'm hard coding the height and the width, it's not, um, it's not resizing automatically because now I'm telling the container be exactly this size. And if your children don't fit inside, well, they just don't fit inside. Now with a text widget, you know, I can't see all of it, but it's still kind of okay. If I had a different kind of widget, this might give me an overflow error, which means that well, the child can't fit in the size I'm giving it, and it could be quite unhappy, but for this one, it's fine. But for now, let's put it back as double dot infinity, both here and here. That's great. 
refresh it. Okay, now just like last time, I do not like the way Hello World is at the corner here. I think it looks really weird, really awkward. So um, I could do a few things. Uh, let's say I just want it to be in the center, where I could take my container and wrap this in a center widget and save it, and nothing happened. Well, that, that's weird. I wrap my container in a center widget, so why is Hello World not in the center? Well, center is the parent of container. So the total container is being centered in the safe area. The safe area, of course, is the parent of center. But Hello World, which is the child of container, is not being centered in the container. It's the container being centered. So we obviously do need to be quite careful where we put our widgets. It does matter the position, what we wrap in what. Okay, so this was not what I wanted. So I'm going to remove this widget. So control click, remove here. And instead I'm gonna take my text, control click, wrap with widget, and give this center, control shift I, refresh. Okay, so that looks much better. But do you know what? I think it looks kind of strange how it's exactly in the center. And this is probably a design thing you'll uh, notice later on. If it's dead in the center, it almost looks like it's not in the center because it looks like it's too far down. What I would really want is I'd want this text to be higher up, maybe around here. And then it's just gonna look a bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, but center puts it in the center. <laughs> so it seems I'm not gonna be able to do that with this widget. So yeah, that's fine. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to give this container, and I have a few options. I have a padding, uh, but the one I'm looking for right now is this one, alignment. And first, let me just refresh this. So I didn't save it. So this is how it is by default. And what I'm gonna do is give it an alignment property. And alignment takes an alignment geometry, but alignment geometry is an abstract class. You'll see if I do like this, it says abstract class, which means I can't use it. So what I'm gonna use instead is just alignment dots, and then our suggestions come up here. I'm just gonna start with center, and it does exactly the same thing. So really quickly, alignment is a class which extends alignment geometry. So if you remember from, uh, from our uh, OOP lessons, that does mean I can use uh, the alignments as an alignment geometry because of polymorphism. So this works, that's all fine. And we also saw we had a lot of other options. So we had alignment dot top center, for example. Well, that centers it this way, it's on the top. Okay, uh, we have a bottom center. Yeah, that's great. But this isn't what I'm looking for. What I wanted, if you guys remember, was something which put it around here. And I can't see any, like, two thirds option or anything like that. So what am I gonna do? Hmm. It seems like I might be out of luck. Maybe I just need to give up, go home and leave it at that. But there's a pandemic, I'm already at home. So giving up is not an option. I'm just gonna have to power through this. So I'm gonna give this a alignment to top center. And then I'm gonna take this container and wrap this in a column. A column is our next layout widget. A column lets us place things one on top of the other. So I have my container here, and if I refresh this, if I save it and refresh it, unfortunately, it's given me an error. The reason this is happening is because I was using double dot infinity for my height and my width. And my column is going to take the maximum amount of space it can. 
but then when I give it a height of double infinity, it gets quite confused because the container is able to infer what I mean, but my column isn't. So I'm going to have to delete this, then refresh it. Okay, so now I can see my container is taking the maximum amount of width it can, but you know, the height's not quite great. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll <laughs> solve that. But for now, let's just let's just accept this. And what I'm going to do is give it another container, and I'll actually put it on. I'll put it here. That's fine. And I'm going to give this one a different color so you can see more clearly where it is. Now I'm going to give it a color of blue so it's not too ugly. Refresh this, and my container is not showing up because it doesn't have any height or any width. When my container was by itself, it took the maximum amount of space that it could. But now that it's inside a column, it's going to take the minimum by default, uh, the minimum height by default. So I do need to specify a height, otherwise I won't be able to see this. And reload this, and now we can see this. I'm going to give this top one a height of 100 as well. So remember I wanted this to be around here. So what are we going to do? Are we just going to guess like maybe 400 here, maybe 400 here? Eh, I'm getting that error I was telling you guys about, the overflow. So I don't have that much space. And I'll put this on bottom center. Yeah, this doesn't look how we want it to. And this is obviously the wrong way of doing it. Um, you could try to hard code it, it's not a good thing. What we're going to do is get rid of these two, save it, and then from my first container, I'm going to control click, wrap with widget, and use expanded. And then from the server one, control click, expanded, control shift i to format, and refresh this. Okay, now it's starting to look a bit better. What expanded does is expanded tells my containers to take the maximum amount of space they can while inside the column. If we just tell the container to take the maximum amount of space just using height double infinity inside column, it's going to throw us an error, it's not going to work. But by using this expanded property, Flutter is able to calculate how much space to give it so I don't get that error. But what's even cooler than this is, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with web development at all. Uh, I guess a lot of you guys would be. If you guys remember Flexbox from CSS, Flutter works in a very, very similar way to that. And in fact, it's very similar also to a React Native, if you've ever worked with that. So I can give expanded a flex, which tells it like a proportion to take. By default, flex is one on each of them. So if I give flex one to each, refresh, nothing happens. But watch what happens when I change this flex to two. So now this flex is twice of this one, and I refresh that. Now this is going to take twice as much space. So you can see when I use flex with some number, Flutter is going to calculate how much space it has in total and then divide that by the total numbers. So in this case, one plus two is three. So this gets one third of the space and this gets two thirds of the space. What's really cool about this is that means I can give it very, very precise numbers. Um, I could have something completely random like I could have a 51 and 49. Uh, to simulate percentages and it looks like half and half because <laughs> that's almost what it is but I'm just trying to show how you can have more precise things and in this case we can test out a few numbers what if I try two here three here how does that look mm, this looks okay but maybe I want to give this a 2.5 I want it to be a bit lower well, this isn't going to work because it needs to take an int, not a double. Okay, so what I can do is just double both of them. Give this a 5, give this a 6, save it. 
Yeah, this looks a bit better. Um, just to see what it looks like, I'm going to put both of the containers with the same background color of white and save it. I like this, I like this. This is how the layout actually works. In reality, I have two different containers and this is helping me put things where I want them to go. But then the user doesn't see that because I'm not I'm not showing the different background colors. I'm just having them all look the same. So it looks like one single piece, one single canvas, one single page, when in reality, that's not what's happening at all. All of your apps, and this is also true for web pages, are going to be made of many small boxes, with some boxes uh, bigger, some boxes smaller, but everything just goes into its box. And how those boxes fit with each other is gonna determine where everything is displayed. In reality, it's not one big canvas, it's many small containers, which together make the big canvas. And this is exactly why we're giving these different colors in these, um, in these tutorials, so you can more clearly see what's happening behind the scenes. But when it's all finished, you're not gonna be seeing this, it's gonna look just amazing. Okay, gentlemen, so that's actually going to be it for this lesson. Uh, in the next one, I'm going to go into more details about this column widget and also its, uh, its sibling, the row. And we'll talk a lot about how different things align and it's going to be just a great lesson. So I'm looking forward to that. And then in the following lesson, we're going to have an exercise solution. So you guys have a chance to actually practice your layouts and make sure everything is working exactly the way you want it to. So be sure to stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, and like this video if you feel that you've learned a lot. So that was it for today. For myself, Avidius, I'm gonna head out.